Happy Monday, June 5th, after work story, and happened to be graduation day. Yeah, it's a time of celebration and new beginnings, and we hear what a wonderful world in the background. Just ask my fourth graders, what are you going to do to make this world even more wonderful or make Chicago better this summer? Yeah, we know that you're going to play in Little League and go and camp and swim and everything, but what else are you going to do to help perhaps the homeless, the people who are already here, or some someone else who might be suffering? I don't know, but just something to think about. All right, well, the story that we are looking at is Dream Builder, the story of architect Philip Freeland, and this is so appropriate because our children, our youth, our parents, our families, they have dreams, and this is the perfect time. This is the perfect time for us to review our desires to make this world better. So, Philip Freeline, architect. All right, by Kelly Starling Lyons, illustrated by Laura Freeman, and oh my, let's read the foreword. A dream, many generations in the making. Philip Freedom's grandfather was an acclaimed painter of the Harlem Renaissance. His father, a businessman, attended the 1963 March on Washington. Hey! While his mother was an educator and art enthusiast. Oh, this is wonderful. When Phil decided to become an architect, he chose to focus on schools. Don't you love school buildings? Were you like me where, when you were in college, I would just drive intentionally in front of a school building or a playground just to, to be there just to hear the kids laughter and the playing and and I would eat my lunch and have the windows down were you like that well he built schools intentionally libraries oh we know we love libraries and museums oh my goodness all three of those places that connect people with their heritage and fill hearts with joy yes and in 2009, Phil's team won a commission that let him use his personal history in service to the country. The extraordinary Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture. Dream Builder, the story of architect Philip Freeland, celebrates a contemporary black STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Hello, Role model. Oh, this is perfect for graduates. Oh my goodness. As they're venturing out to new territories and, and taking new classes freshman year and beyond. A man whose brilliant work enabled the creation of an iconic building reflecting America's past and future with a stirring text by Kelly Starling Lyons, vibrant pictures by Laura Freeman, and an afterward from Philip Freeland himself. It is sure to inspire the next generation of dreamers and builders. Oh, this is wonderful. He's going to tell us some stuff. Oh, I think this might be two parts. Oh, there's a lot of text. Oh, look. Vision. In Philip Freeland's world, art breathes dreams to life. Everywhere he looks around. His Philadelphia home, paintings and drawings greet him from the walls. Phil listens to his parents discuss artists at the dinner table. He watches his big sister splatter canvases with creativity. He plays basketball with his buddies and carries a sketchbook around his neighborhood. He couldn't help it. I have some students like that. Buildings, roses, people passing on the street. Phil sees them all and draws clear and strong. Back with Bill, buildings, playing basketball. You can't help it. When it's within you, you have to get it out. And you don't care how foolish you might look to other people. They'll be like, why are you sketching? But at school, what Phil sees is out of focus. Letters on a page don't spring to life as words. His mom, a teacher, tries her best to help him. Ma, ma, man, what does it say? She asks. Phil lowers his head and his heart sinks. His big brother and sister are great students. His dad is a successful businessman. Why can he see how to read? Oh, is this dyslexia? Mm. 
Well, we know that he's a visual learner. And sometimes that is dominated by the right hemisphere. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Someone in his family shows him a strength he holds inside his pop-pop. Alan Randall Freeland is an educator and Harlem Renaissance painter. Yeah. He's visual. And that's the case with a lot of students who supposedly have ADD, attention deficit disorder, or if they're hyper and all that energy. But they're very creative. A lot of them are. And they are distracted by what they see. I'm just saying. His dad was a painter. In his studio, Phil sees pastel homes by harbors, fishermen, still wet canvases, and palettes with oily colors dare him to touch. Yeah, this is just who he is. Genetically. Well, one day, the two of them walk through the woods. Son and dad. Phil darts this way and that until Pop Pop tells him to sit by his side on a log. Close your eyes and listen, Pop Pop says. Phil hears birds crooning and squirrels scampering across crunchy leaves. He smells the fragrance of earth. He feels the breeze dance across his honey skin. Phil is seeing the world with an artist's inner eye. Isn't that funny to, to play this song? And we know the first line to the song. I see trees that are green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, he might have been closing his eyes, but I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yeah, everybody has that artist's eye. Foundation. As Phil grows older, his special sight deepens. Mm -hmm. His thoughts have color, shape, and form. Math and science fill him up like art. How about that? Phil can see strings of numbers and formulas in his mind. The Pythagorean theorem and all that other stuff. Reading takes longer to master. His mom and sister recite Shakespeare for fun, but Phil freezes when called to read aloud in class. He struggles to find joy in books until he realizes that words can create images too. In time, those story portraits show him new worlds. What a wonderful world, just like art. I know I had to do that with reading. I was very strong in math. Reading, I would sometimes get distracted, even though, you know, still high scores, but I, I would get bored. And then I just started saying, just start visually picturing everything you're reading. And it helps stay on task. Yeah. All right. Oh, look at this. Phil explores different media. He doesn't just draw. He writes essays and poems. He can see the shape of a car inside a block of balsa wood. He builds using his senses to create. When his father gives him models after business trips, Phil spreads pieces of battleships, cars, and planes out like a puzzle. He doesn't need directions to know where each piece should go. Soon his paintings, sculptures, and models begin to reflect the times. He carves African masks from bars of ivory soap. Black is beautiful. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. They're not just models. They're beliefs that live in him. His father's stories are part of him too. Stories of having to sleep in a different southern hotel than his white colleagues. Stories of being the only black man in airports except for the porters. Stories of being mistaken for an athlete instead of a businessman. In his proud black neighborhood, Phil sees people who never make the news. His neighbors are doctors, suit and tie wearing detectives, teachers, friends learning to play concert piano. You see this, right? We have all sorts of people in the community, right? And they are able to have their dreams realized. Not too late to dream a new dream. Phil hears a chorus around the nation shouting for justice and equality. When his father, when his father is at the March on Washington, Phil watches on TV and feels like he's there with his dad, soaking in Dr. King's dream. Wonderful. Yes, Dr. King had a dream and you have a dream. 
frame at Central High School Phil signs up for a drafting class when the teacher asks the students to look at the front of a machine and draw the other three sides Phil gazes deep inside and can see what's out of view he becomes a top student in his art and drafting classes he wins industrial design competitions an idea emerges until it becomes clear as a snapshot Phil wants to be an architect someone who designs buildings a perfect blend of his strengths in art, uh-oh, math, and science. How about that? At Hampton University, hey, a historically black college, Phil aces every architecture lesson, tutoring classmates who need help. Later, when he attends North Carolina State University School of Architecture, he soars too but he wonders why they never study anything created by people who look like him. On his own, he discovers black architects who design celebrity homes and a university chapel. He reads about African and Islamic builders, his classes left out. He thinks about artists like Pop Pop, whose work made unsung people and places seen. One summer, while Phil's still a student, he takes the lead in designing a solar greenhouse in Virginia. As the structure grows and glistens, a dream begins to take shape. Phil wants to make the world better through white, through what he creates. And that was a key question again. How are you gonna make the world better? How are you gonna improve conditions? So much is going on in this city, but maybe in your city. How are you going to make it better? As an architect, Phil turns wishes into buildings with doors and windows, plumbing and lights. By the time he founds his own firm in North Carolina, his mission is clear. He will not design prisons or casinos. Phil creates schools, libraries, bus stations, museums, places that help people, that show everyday beauty, that celebrate heritage, and fills hearts with joy. What a principled man. <laughs> what a wonderful story. Then one day, Phil hears about a dream imagined decades before he was born. In 1915, 50 years after the end of the Civil War, people dreamed of a national memorial to honor black soldiers and sailors. That dream grew until they could see a museum that would rise like a phoenix on the Washington Mall. A museum to honor black achievement, a museum to show black resilience, strength, and pride. For decades, that dream was deferred. But in 2003, a national commission made, makes it come true. A museum will be created that documents black history, life, and culture. Phil and architects around the world want to design it. Yes. Years later, the commission chooses Phil and architect Max Bond to create the preliminary master plan. For months, they worked together making a guide to future spaces and exhibits. In 2008, an international competition is announced. The winning team will get to design and build the museum. For this project, Phil and Max need a dream team. They want to include someone whose work is known beyond the United States. Phil and Max meet with David Ajaye, an acclaimed British Ghanaian architect. As the men talk, they watch one another's body language. Can they unite? The team clicks. Phil will be lead architect, coordinating all aspects of the complex project. David will be lead designer, coming up with ideas in collaboration with the team. They have just 60 days to plan a dream, passed down for generations. Can they do it? Oh, yes, they can. They huddle around tables, talk on phones for hours send countless emails and dig deep yeah we're gonna have to dig deep they look they see a structure shaped like a crown worn by african kings they see ironwork patterns forged by black artisans they see a porch of welcome and they listen they hear the ocean rocking ships of stolen people they hear footsteps marching for freedom and justice they hear voices of unsung heroes waiting for their day remember be careful what you listen to huh because you got so many amazing messages protected. In front of the judges for the competition, Phil tells the story of the dream they want to build. He feels pop pop, his father and mother, his family with him, and his models stand proudly. His word pictures light up the room. Soon Phil hears the words that make his heart sing. Yes, 
Their next mission is to get the museum open before Barack Obama, the first black president, leaves office. Can you understand what's going on? In 2016, a century after the dream was born, they deliver. Oh, how beautiful. Look at the trees that are so green. What a wonderful world. In his contemplative court, Phil reads Dr. King's words, until justice runs down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. He does his eyes and smells the moisture of the falling water. Listen to the peaceful sound. The museum rises near where his father once stood as Dr. King shared his dream. Phil thinks of Pop Pop, who taught him to see like an artist, his parents who encouraged him to create and imagine. He thinks of how every experience led him to his moment, this moment. Bill Freeland, the kid artist from Philly, has become a builder of dreams. We are determined to work and fight until justice runs down like water and righteousness like a mighty stream. That's from Dr. Martin Luther King, 1965. Wonderful. Look at this. Oh my goodness, I wish I could read all this. Maybe that'll be a separate. Oh my goodness, this is wonderful. Growing up, I didn't know any architects. I was drawn to the arts and the talent that I displayed as a child was encouraged and nurtured by my family. When I discovered architecture in high school, I realized that art and creativity could be used to create buildings. Over time, I learned about the achievements of African-American architects, including Julian Abelli and Paul Revere Williams. I was inspired. Coming of age during the heights of the civil rights movement, I felt compelled to contribute in some way to the struggle for social justice. As my career as an architect evolved, I continually sought opportunities to bring my design skills into alignment with my desire to make positive contributions to my community and beyond. With many development steps along the way, these parallels aspirations ultimately led me to my role as architect a record for the National Museum of African American History and Culture. My involvement with this amazing project was an honor and a privilege and the pinnacle the height of my career, the decades long journey leading up to the museum's opening, including significant contributions from countless individuals and organizations. While the architects portrayed and dream builder represent the leadership of the design team, it was Lonnie Bunch. Hey, he's from Chicago. The museum's founding director and now the secretary of the Smithsonian Institution, who was a driving force behind the realization of this new national landmark. You know, he's, he was from the Chicago Historical Society, Lonnie Bunch. A special thanks to Kelly Starling, who conceived of the idea for Dream Builder, and the story, Laura Freeman, for her lovely illustrations. And I also want to thank my wife, Nina Freeland, for her love and support. Ah, look at his family. Beautiful. And I don't know if I can read the author's note. Oh, Kelly Starling Lions. I might this might run out. When I moved to North Carolina more than a decade ago, I heard about the Freeland Group, a black owned architectural firm over the years. Its influence seemed to be everywhere. I went the Durham Bulls Athletic Park, a terminal and parking garage at Raleigh Durham International Airport, the Gantt Center in Charlotte, the Reginald F. Lewis Museum in Baltimore. I was proud and intrigued. As I learned more about the founder, Phil Freeland, I realized that along with creating important spaces, Phil built hopes and dreams. He was a founding men member of the Triangle East chapter of 100 Black Men, which focuses on uplifting and empowering youth. Woo! I'm telling you, he worked with the Harvard Graduate School of Design and the architectural firm Perkins & Will, where he was design director of the North Carolina practice. To establish the Phil Freeland Fellowship Fund, he taught at his alma mater's North Carolina State and MIT, what? and mentored people who wanted to follow his path. Then I read about Phil's work and the lead architect for the National Museum of African American History and Culture. I was there for the opening day with my husband, children, and friends gazing at that bronze crown on the National Mall made us feel like kings and queens. The exhibits moved and amazed us, but we were caught in the museum spell before we walked in the door. People had already suggested I write a picture book about Phil. Visiting the museum made me want to write one even more. A couple of years ago, I got my chance. My agent let me know that an editor at Lee and Lowe Books was interested in publishing a story about an architect who designed the museum. I immediately suggested Phil. When I reached out to him, Phil graciously responded that he was happy to participate in the project, seeing it as a way to inspire more kids of color to consider architecture as a career. 
over a series of meetings, I interviewed him and his wonderful wife, Grammy-nominated jazz singer and composer Nina Freeland in their home. Slowly, a story began to take shape of a young artist who found his calling and used it to honor black contributions and culture. Phil was proud of his partnership with Sir David Ajayi, the museum's lead designer and architectural pioneer J. Max Bond Jr., who died in 2009. I asked Phil how it felt to be the museum's lead architect. It was a dream, the commission of a lifetime. With every project, Phil showed all of us how to dream bigger and bolder. <laughs> you dream bigger and bolder. He was a man of integrity, talent, and vision. I mourned with people around the nation when Phil passed away in July 2019 from amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. His brilliant legacy lives on his wife, Nina, and his children, Dean, Pierce, and Maya, and his grands in the stunning museum and spaces he designed. And in every one he touched, this book is a tribute to Phil and all the dream builders around the world. Hey! And then she gives honor to those. Thank you for opening your home and so many. And Kelly Star Lyons, is the author of multiple award-winning picture books and chapter books. How Lift Every Voice and Sing Inspired Generations with Art Keith Mallet and Jada Jones. Good for her. And Laura Freeman has illustrated more than 30 picture books. Her picture book edition of Hidden Figures by Margot Lee Shetterly won both the NAACP Image Award and Coretta Scott King Illustrator Honor. She lives in Atlanta. Philip Freeland served as the architect of record for the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture and designed many other acclaimed museums and public spaces, a longtime advocate for diversity in architecture. Again, he passed away July 2019. Hey, I know you feel like dreaming and building.